The EPR experiment started out in the 1930s as a thought experiment that was supposed to highlight that quantum mechanics could not be a complete theory. But today, with modern technology, we can actually perform the EPR experiment. And we have found that non-locality is real. But that does not mean that we have a complete understanding of quantum mechanics. This video is going to use the EPR experiment to explain a new theory that gives us a deeper understanding of quantum mechanics with an objective reality based on an interactive process of energy exchange. If we consider two quantum particles such as photons that are produced at the same time by a common source and which move apart with equal and opposite velocity. Each behaves as a wave before it is detected and a particle when it is detected. If we choose to measure the wave-like property of the first photon, such as its wavelength, then this amounts to measuring its momentum. And since the two photons have the same magnitude of momentum, but traveling in opposite directions, then we will also know the second photon's precise momentum, and can assign to it a precise wavelength. This amounts to saying that it is also behaving as a wave. But if we had instead chosen to measure the precise position of the first photon, then it would appear to us as a localized particle. We would also know the precise location of the second photon at the same moment in time, without looking at it since it would have travelled an equal distance away on the other side of the light source. This points towards the first photon only having a precise position with a particle nature or a precise momentum with a wave nature, depending on what we choose to do to it and how we measure it. It does not matter how far away the two photons are, and we have not come in contact with the second photon at all. But we could, in principle, have known either the untouched photon's precise position as a particle, or its precise momentum as a wave at any given moment in time. We can't do this in practice, since we would have to have carried out the two different measurements on the first photon at the same time. But what is important is the second photon should have had a defined position and momentum. Einstein believed in what he called an objective reality that was not based on probability where we should not have to wait until we measure a particular property of a quantum system for that property to be real. The best way to visualize this probabilistic nature of wave-particle duality is by using polarizing filters. This is a view through a polarizing filter. The filter only lets through light of one polarization angle and blocks light at 90 degrees to it. Therefore, one polarizer lets through 50% of unpolarized light, 
and two polarizers at 90 degrees to each other block 100% of the light. The view now is of two polarizers crossed at 90 degrees. One might think that if we place a third polarizer between these two filters, it would only make it darker. However, when a third polarizer is positioned between the two and rotated to 45 degrees, some light gets through the front polarizer, even though it is at 90 degrees to the back one. This shows that the polarizer is actually changing the polarization. This is a dramatic example of the measurement changing what is being measured. Light is made of photons that are quantum by nature. Their polarization can only be parallel or at right angles to the direction in which it is measured. All the photons passing through the first polarizer are vertically polarized. But the polarization at 45 degrees is not defined until it is measured. Therefore, half of them get through the middle polarizer. The photon is probabilistic. They pass through the filter completely, or not at all. And the probabilities depend only on the angle difference of the two filters. This is logical. If the future is unfolding, photon by photon, relative to the atoms of the periodic table and the wavelength of the electromagnetic spectrum, new photons are formed relative to the angle of the middle filter, and this changes the intensity of the light going through the next filter. In this theory, this is totally logical because only the present moment is real within the reference frame of the experiment as a particle. With the wave particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons forming an interactive process, or what I like to call a blank canvas that we can interact with, forming the possible into the actual. The future only exists as a probability wave function, and the past has gone forever within a process of continuous energy exchange that forms the ever-changing world of our everyday life. If our eyes were more sensitive to the different wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum, we would be able to see that everything is radiating light continuously like the inside of an electric light bulb. The spontaneous absorption and emission of photon energy forms a universal process of energy exchange that we measure as a period of time. This is logical when you think there is no flow or concept of time within the atoms. Only the distribution of positive and negative charge. And this is what you would expect if the future is unfolding relative to the electron probability cloud that surrounds the atoms as a process of energy exchange, with photons forming the movement of positive and negative charge. The interesting thing about charge is that it can cover a large area of interstellar space. One of the most important parts of the EPR experiment, and that is light has to be entangled, or in other words, the light has to be produced by a common source that moves apart with equal and opposite velocity. It was found that entangled photons that were formed by the same source line up 100% of the time.
and independent photons that were not formed by the same source only line up 50% of the time. This 50% is based on probability. A good way to visualize this is with water waves. When we drop a pebble into a pond, the waves ripple out with the crests and troughs being synchronized as the waves move out over a period of time. It is the same with light waves that are generated at the same place and time. Non-locality and superposition are a natural property of waves. There is no paradox here, just a beautiful symmetry, and because that symmetry is synchronized, it can seem like information is traveling faster than light. But it is no different than the movement of charge over a large area of interstellar space. And this is exactly what we are seeing unfolding in the EPR experiment. Why this is so difficult to comprehend is because we are also seeing the future coming into existence relative to our actions. Within such a process, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle represents the same uncertainty we have with any future event at the smallest scale of the process. With each photon oscillation only occurring once, forming a probabilistic future relative to the atoms of the periodic table. In this theory, creation is in the hand and eye of the beholder as a process of continuous creation or energy exchange. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. It will help the promotion of this theory.